Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and this is CA1, chapter 11, called Project Management. Um, I couldn't find my old video that I did for this, so I'm going to redo it now. So, bear with me, I haven't done CA1 for two years, but let's see how much I remember. Okay, so Project Management is quite a straightforward chapter. In my exam, they didn't even ask a question on it, but it is important to, to learn. Now, the notes that we got had this acronym called Project Cramps. And I'm just going to go through what each letter stands for saying that you need to know. And they are the characteristics of a well-run project. So let's see what are these characteristics. Um, planning, um, risk analysis, having clear objectives, knowing what the customer needs, uh, judging and monitoring development, um, communication is always key, having some conflicting management which leads to development, that's something that you should look into more, it's quite interesting how, when, how conflict can actually lead to development, um, testing at all stages, that's making sure that nothing's broken, everything's working, having a critical path analysis, making sure that the relationship um, between suppliers is stable yet challenging because if it's not challenging one party might be you know more beneficial than the other you want to work at the appropriate pace you want to have certain milestones and review them and your performance is measured and the quality standards must be set and it must always be within a supportive environment what's quite interesting is the work I do is I work with project managers. So project managers, they actually ensure all of these things and they're actually very good. And yeah, they make sure that the work I do gets done and that the client's happy. So tools for planning, monitoring, and reporting on a project's progress. Um, must always be user-friendly. The issues to be tracked must be written down. And we must always have an understanding of what we think the final outcome is going to be. Okay, what's good about having a written document it is that it avoids the ambiguity of an oral agreement. It's easy to distribute to all parties. I mean, now with email, it's copy paste and you send it out. Um, you can't specify everything, so do allow for a little bit of freedom within the document. And yeah. What is this? Aims of project, issues necessary for implementation, areas of risk, alternative strategies for dealing with risk. That's what you want to write in your projects. And another acronym that's also from the notes, it's this thing called PROS. And within every written strategy document, you want to mention the policies, whether they're financial policies, legal policies, operational policies, risk policies, communication policies, and IT policies, um, roles and responsibilities of the various people, what the objectives are, how they identified, how to meet them, quality standards, all that. Um, you want to schedule, you know, so that you keep on track, and you always want to make sure that you've got your costs written down. I mean, how many projects go over budget? It's quite scary. So the main people in a project, it's the owner or the sponsor, the person who pays for it, who tells us what we're going to do, who sets the objectives, and he's normally going to be the person who uses the finished product, and he's just going to be involved with some of the higher level management issues. We've then got the project manager who's hands-on, they're a good leader, they look for direction and action, they're good at organizing resources, they can motivate the team. They check to make sure everything's running smoothly and they will provide feedback to the owner. Then you have some other members um, and they need to be competent, supportive, committed to success and must always think of the end user. You know, how if you're making an app, you must think, how is the end user going to know how to play the game or whatever like that. Okay, we almost finished with this chapter, project interfaces. You have your designers and then you have your builders. You have your specifiers and you have your implementers. You have your owners and you have your managers. And the key component here is communication. So what is the process for managing the project? You want to have a project definition. 
you want to have a plan, you want to analyze the risks, you want to monitor the development, and you want to measure the performance. And yeah, this actually goes into the actuarial control cycle, but I've got this weird PDF thing, so I have to move it up like that. And yeah, I've just released a video on that, on the actuarial control cycle, um, develop the solution, monitor the experience, specify the problem. Actually, you specify the problem first, then you develop the solution, you monitor the experience, and it goes on like that. Always being professional and always being aware of the economic environment. So yeah, that is chapter 11 for CA1. Um, all the best with the studying. Like I've said in my very first video, this is a difficult exam, so do give it 110%. Cheers, guys.